Afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Councillors call for, councillor rather calls for the NWA to find a permanent fix to flooding at the Riley Bridge in Hanover. Garbage collection concern in St. Thomas. And later in sports, Jamaican batsman in line for ODI return. Hello, I'm Keys, and here are the details. The National Works Agency NWA is being taken to task for the flooding which took place at the Riley Bridge in Hanover last evening. Now, at least one political representative is insisting that the long-standing problem needs to be addressed. Cody and Barrett reports. The Riley Bridge, which is the major link between Montego Bay and Negril, is a constant headache for residents and the motoring public. Whenever it rains heavily or for a prolonged period, the river is blocked by debris, especially bamboo. According to residents, since last week, the river has been blocked by bamboo and the carcass of two cattle washed down in the debris. That blocked the flow of water under the bridge. Councillor for the Lucy Division, Easton Edwards, says the matter has been a long-standing issue which needs to be addressed with urgency. I have been having discussion with the agency for quite some time. Uh, they keep saying to me that they have to take estimates, send it to Kingston and have Kingston sort out the financial aspect of it. And, you know, I said to them that, you know, the coming down of the bamboo, because, you know, Hanover is the second largest bamboo producer in this country. And if you check along the river banks, it is bamboo on both sides. And the fact that they are responsible, we would have said to them, say, listen, mate, there must be some funding set aside in the event that we have emergency. But he says those calls seem to have fallen on deaf ears. The member of parliament would have done her job she would have made calls on a timely basis. But we can't have the member of parliament coming in and cleaning this. There's an agency that is responsible for doing so. So she has done her best and she can't do any more. So we're asking the agency that is responsible, come on, do your job, man, so that the citizens of this community can be at ease. But speaking to our news team last night, NWA Western Regional Community Relations Officer Janelle Ricketts said the bamboo issue is a perennial problem that's not easy to address. Whereas the bamboos along the stream will over time rot and find their way into the river, we do also have a challenge in terms of residents cutting uh, along the riverbank for various purposes and oftentimes, especially when there is heavy rainfall, these and other forms of debris will find their way into the river channels. So while we work on having the area cleared, we are also encouraging residents to be careful of how you dispose of your waste. TVJ News understands that State Minister in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for Western Jamaica, Homer Davis, is to tour the area on Wednesday with the Member of Parliament for Hanover Western, Tamika Davis. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. Residents of Dalvey District in St. Thomas are getting restless due to uncollected garbage in their community. Scenes of overpatched drums and torn garbage have been in the community for over three months. Now, according to residents, no garbage truck has been to the area. The, the, the garbage problem is it's woeful. It's not that the uh, you don't see litter everywhere, but it's the fact that it's not being collected on time. So even when it is cleaned up and put in the rubbish bins and stuff like that, it's like um, there is no re regular um, bin trucks and things to come and pick them up. That garbage truck take out of the bin, leave it same place, go and leave it about two to three weeks now. So it can, it's very much a nuisance, smell awful and everything. And since the garbage trucks are not making their rounds, the animals are having a field day. Them taking too long to come. So you find say, the dog, fowl, everything just get to turn them over and litter the place. 
I just, I not just hear so the whole district right round and round. You see, if them did take just a two weeks to come, it won't so bad. Let me say, sometime I'll a month before they come. Now, a news team tried to get in touch with the executive director of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, Audley Gordon, but calls to his phone went unanswered. To some commodities news now, citing improvements in global market conditions, Jamaica Brawlers Group has announced a cut in prices for some of its products. The changes take effect tomorrow. Now, the prices for the best-dressed chicken grade A whole bird and mixed parts will be reduced by $12.50 per kilogram. Group president and CEO of Jamaica Brawlers, Christopher Levy, says the decision is driven by driven by stability in the supply of grains, foreign exchange and shipping costs. Mr. Levy believes there is a cooling of global inflationary pressures. There's a lot of discussion around recession and um, there's a challenge with the Chinese economy where stuff comes out of there. Um, obviously, the UK economy is um, having its chance. So you're seeing a real challenge with... Um, what I'd call the depth of these economies, global economies, and it's having downward pressure on some of these prices. Mr. Levy says the current global market conditions is a boost for Jamaica's I economy. I feel that, um, you know, whilst there's still a tremendous amount of risk in, in the economy and in, in the world, um, you know, you got to kind of take, take the little base hits when you can get them. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, six months' time, we could be having a totally different conversation. But right now, we're able to, to do this, um, and we felt it's, it, it just is the right thing to do. The parliamentary opposition is blasting the government for what it claims is the lack of infrastructural readiness for the back-to-school period. In a press briefing moments ago, the People's National Party, PNP, said the migration of teachers and the subsequent challenges this will present for school administrators are cause for alarm. The teachers employed to the system will deplete by approximately 30% in 10 years and 60% in 20 years. One should further note that 40 years is not abnormal for a teacher who has committed their lives to the teaching profession. The minister seems not to grasp the importance of the long run cost curve, which values the contribution and importance of experience to performance. It is for this reason, therefore, that one can reasonably argue that the immediate steps need to be taken to mitigate against the negatives the system is about to endure Grow, um, going into the new school year. Spokesperson on Education Damien Crawford says more long-term strategies must be designed to mitigate against the challenges. Meanwhile, he has put forward some suggestions. One, immediately invest in the upgrading of staff rooms to create an adequate and comfortable environment of teachers to work from. Two, Consider motor vehicle concessions of varying percentages for teachers serving five years, 10 years, and 15 years, unbroken. Three, reduce student loan by 5% for every year the teacher stays within the public education system. Four, arrange for special teacher's limit of possibly $14 million per person from the NHT with a 1% interest rate, which transformed to the normal loan once the teacher leaves the system. Other suggestions from the oppos opposition include negotiating package deals with internet providers, creating teacher public sector housing schemes, and reviewing funds for STEM schools for teachers. Three more persons were arrested during a major police operation in St. Anne, nicknamed Operation Leviticus. The police are reporting that in addition to those to those arrests, dozens of summonses were served for other breaches of various laws. Now, yesterday's operation was at various checkpoints at different sections of the North Coast Highway. The three individuals were arrested for breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act after the police seized 55 pounds of ganja during the operation. The police also served 51 summonses, issued 16 tickets, executed seven warrants and seized three motor vehicles. Operation Leviticus was launched on Saturday and targeted several issues, including traffic management, illegal vending and major crimes. 
Now, the RG Agrina Communications Group dominated the CBU Caribbean Media Awards at the Shaw Park Cultural Complex in Tobago last evening. The company won 14 awards in the television, print and radio categories combined. O'Shane Masters has that story. The RG Agrina Communications Group took five awards in the television categories. They included Best Documentary Program for Housing Crisis, Best Entertainment Program for Marcia Griffiths, Coverage of Disaster Risk Reduction, which was sponsored by the UNDRR for Erosion in the East, Health Education Journalism, sponsored by Sajiko Barbados for COVID Crisis, National Chest Hospital, and Best Producer for Big Youth. In addition to its five TV awards, the RGR Glena Communications Group won awards in the media of print, a total of five, and radio, a total of four. The print award winners comprised coverage of disaster risk reduction sponsored by UNDRR was awarded to We're Taking This Global, Wholeness Faces the Music won coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. Health Education Journalism, which was sponsored by Sajiko Barbados, was awarded to Pregnant Kids Alarm. Coverage of people with disabilities went to Dread for the Disabled. And Insta Crooks received the win for Financial Literacy Journalism, which was sponsored by Sajiko Barbados. In the radio categories, RGR Glina winners were Year in Review 2020, credited to Giovanni Dennis, who won Best Sound Engineer, Beyond the Headlines, January 14, 2021, won Best Magazine Program, Sim Swap Scam, won for Best News Item, and Oxygen Crisis, Perspectives and Probe, earned the award for coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. And it's time for the latest in the world of business. Here's Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In business news, JP Farms, Jamaica's largest commercial grower of bananas, has secured a customer in Trinidad and Tobago, bringing to an end a hiatus in the export of the fruit to that country. Shipments resumed last month and since then, JP Farms has supplied the Twin Island nation with more than 19,000 kilograms of the fruit. That number is expected to double this month, then quadruple over the next few months. Visitors to Dolphin Cove's marine parks more than doubled in the second quarter ending June, leading to a 81% spike in revenue to 3.8 million US dollars. But it was still not enough to compete with earnings in 2021. Profit fell by 17% to 1 million US dollars. Chairman Stafford Borrowed attributed some of the growth in revenues to lower expenses due to efficiency measures that were put in place in 2020. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. The Business Minute. Brought to you by Business Smarter with Smart Mobile Solutions. Jamaica's one-stop shop for the best mobile technology services. And from business, we head to a preview of what's to come in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at malnutrition, more specifically overnutrition. This trend may be at risk of trying to overcompensate for this by getting involved in other activities, which may not be socially appropriate. So we try to um, tell parents, try to ensure that your child is in a normal, follows the normal weight trajectory for their age and their sex, and also ensure that they do not cross or get um, into the overweight or obese category. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And now for today's healthy living tip. Know your trigger foods. Avoid eating from containers. Reduce stress. Eat fiber rich foods and eat regular meals. And with news from around the region and across the world, here's Sandy Williams. In regional news, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, TTPS, says it will be adopting new strategies to deal with the escalating rival gangs and civilian shootings that have claimed the lives of more than 360 people so far this year. Acting Police Commissioner MacDonald Jacob says the TTPS is moving to increase its visibility by immediately recalling all officers from vacation leave, restricting leave for the time being, and adjusting the duty roster. 
Jacob says the additional manpower is expected to immediately boost the operational capabilities of the Interagency Task Force, Garden Emergency Branch and General Task Forces in each division. On the international scene, explosions and fires ripped through at least 17 locations in southern Thailand on Wednesday in what appeared to be multiple coordinated attacks that injured seven people. According to police and military statements, the bombings and arson attacks happened after midnight and targeted convenience stores and a gas station across three provinces, lightly injuring at least seven people. No one has claimed responsibility for the attacks so far. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. Jordan, and that's where we leave things for the midday news. Our next newscast will be at 7 p.m. That's primetime news. On behalf of the entire news, sports and production teams, I'm Javon Keyes. Good afternoon.